and welcome to today's Knowledge at Noon event. Uh, so this is uh, called Knowledge at Noon, uh, Methods for Launching Your Screenwriting Career. I'm joined today with faculty member Kevin Downs. So, hi, Kevin. Thank you for joining us. And so Kevin is a faculty member here at the uh, School of Continuing Studies for our um, at Georgetown for our certificate in screenwriting. Um, Kevin holds an MFA in film from NYU, and he's optioned four screen plays for theatrical film and worked as cre creative, key creative partners with several Academy Award winning nominated producers and directors. Um, he also has many students at this point from previous workshops uh, for screenwriting and things like that that are now working and producing creative development and even producing their own work. So without further ado, I would love to hand it over to Kevin here, who's going to, you know, give you an excellent presentation today. Thank you for joining us, Kevin. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, hello, everybody. It's nice to meet you uh, virtually. Um, I'm going to, you know, go over a strategy for launching a screenwriting career. And I want to preface this by saying, look, there are exceptions to everything, okay? And there are different approaches. What I'm going over here is going to be, you know, fairly tried and true method for, you know, getting your work out there and hopefully getting noticed. Um, and, you know, I may say some things along the way that you'll be able to uh, think about an exception for. That's just the nature of it. Um, I'm going to switch to a PowerPoint presentation. So you won't see me for a while. Uh, just some cards that are going to outline, you know, our topics here. So let me get to that and then we'll get started. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm hoping everybody can see this. If not, uh, put something in your chat uh, messaging and Jonathan, let me know. So, okay. First things first, we're talking about someone who's, you know, interested in, you know, working as a writer or getting involved in that aspect of developing creative ideas uh, for the film industry, for television, certainly the internet now is, you know, wide open marketplace. Um, first things first, you got to have a portfolio. You have to have written the work and it's got to be good. Okay. Uh, I have a quote down here. It's the execution, not the idea. Certainly a great idea helps, but it's how it's presented. That's, that's what counts. Certainly within the uh, film industry, uh, people read immense amount of screenplays each day, if not each week. And so the competition is great. And uh, so you need work that's gonna stand out. I have a friend who worked at, uh, as a development head at the David Geffen company for a while before Geffen was with uh, Spielberg and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg at the time. Uh, you know, he read over a thousand scripts a, a, in a year and recommended two. Uh, the thing that could keep you hopeful at this point is that I've done work like that, too. And I have to tell you, the majority of what you read is pretty poorly done. So if you have something that's good, you know, what is good? It needs to be something that makes you want to turn the page. That's mm -hmm. the primary thing. It needs to, to follow industry accepted form and standards. So, you know, you get a, you write a screenplay, a pilot for a television show, uh, and it's also a good idea to not just have one, but have a couple. Uh, you might have, you know, if you're thinking, certainly if you want to say, just write comedy, okay, you would have just, you know, comedy types of screenplays. If you wanted to, uh, you know, be more diverse, say you're thinking of feature film, but also television. Uh, there was a time I wouldn't recommend this, but uh, television is you know exploding market right now. You might want to write the pilot for a television show too. 
something that shows the breadth of what you can do. Uh, after you get that done, you need to take your work and register it or copyright it. Okay. Uh, that gives you some sort of marker if there's ever an issue of authorship. Now, don't be too concerned about this, but most of the time when people think that, uh, you know, their idea has been stolen or something like that, it's uh, ill-founded uh, thinking. People just, uh, you know, tons of similar ideas are being developed all the time. But if something ever got to that point, and it probably won't, uh, some sort of marker that, you know, you completed this original idea at this certain time, this original screenplay at this certain time is needed. The Writer's Guild is very easy to register with. You just uh, go to the Writer's, because we're on the East Coast, I assume, or, you know, I guess some of you are uh, coming in from outside of uh, the East Coast. Uh, in the States, it's the Writer's Guild East and the Writer's Guild West. If you're this side of the Mississippi, you're in the Writer's Guild East. Just go to their website. The registration is, uh, it's a union, but they have services for non-union members too. This is one of them. And uh, the fee is minuscule. You just register your script with them, you get a number. Uh, and it's pretty much immediate. Uh, you can also copyright it too. Or instead, there's an advantage to that. The, the disadvantage is it takes a long time to get your copyright. The advantage to it is, is that uh, there are maybe a little bit more legal protections in copywriting your work. So you get that done. Let's move to the next uh, phase. The first, okay, look. So you got the script. And now you're in the part of getting noticed. Okay, the most important thing you can do is start to network and build a community of peers, uh, fellow writers who are knowledgeable about the craft, uh, other people who work in the film industry and see a screenplay as uh, almost a type of currency or an art, as opposed to um, lay people who are just sort of interested in the movies and are, are reading it. You need to get out there among your people. Uh, you know, I would certainly take classes like ours. I would, uh, you know, volunteer at film festivals, go to film festivals, join writers groups. Uh, if you're interested, uh, if you can do it, uh, crew on some independent movies just as a production assistant. Uh, you know, if you were to, you know, know anyone who needed uh, an assistant, a producer, uh, a production company, do that kind of job, you'll meet, you know, fantastic uh, contacts doing that. Uh, various film groups and organizations, certainly in Washington here, there's Women in Film and Video. I would join them. TIVA. Um, Television, Internet, and Video Association, uh, all sorts of groups online. There are also uh, state-run film offices, such as the Virginia Film Office and the Virginia Film, uh, the Virginia Film Office and the Maryland Film Office, and they have uh, on each of those places. Uh, it's either called a bulletin board or a hotline or something like that. I would access that information. They, they will tell you events that are going on. And, uh, you know, quite often there'll be someone speaking about screenwriting seminars. You should go to those uh, pitch sessions where you go out and pitch ideas and maybe meet some contacts. So you got to get into that. OK, and you got to start building this core group of people who know what they're talking about uh, early on. and. The deal is you'll grow with them. You know, it's doubtful that you will meet the uh, magic person that immediately produces your work straight from the uh, as soon as you hand in the script. But meeting someone that you develop a relationship with that develops over the years is really the more mature way of looking at it. OK, so you're going to go out and network. 
You can also start entering contests and fellowships. Um, now, I'm going to preface this by saying some are better than others. And, you know, because of time limitations, I'm not going to go into it too much. I don't want to pitch what we do at Georgetown too much, but, uh, you know, I'll go over this sort of stuff in our classes, but it's available online. Uh, you know, there are contests that, uh, you know, one of the big ones, certainly you'll know, that's very well known is the Nicole Fellowship. That's run by the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Even if you place in that, like in the top 25% of that uh, competition, uh, you'll be noticed. Um, and it's great to have as a calling card. And, you know, screenplays that rise to the top of them, many of them get made. Uh, there are others too. The Austin Film Festival I actually, I actually had students of mine who have uh, been in the finals there. You know whether you win or you don't win. You know it's all a matter of taste if you're in the if you're in the finals. Who the judges, what they personally like. But if you're in the finals, that's great. Um, and many of these places will have networking events in uh, that run in conjunction with the festival. Uh, say you went to the Austin Film Festival, they're going to have a week-long event that surrounds it. And, you know, even if you haven't placed, it's worth going there because there'll be lots of producers there and other people to network with and meet and form relations with. There's also fellowships. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, you submit uh, written work to them. And this is more of a mentoring uh, relationship. They're run by play. Most of the studios will have one. HBO does. Disney has a big one. Uh, they tend to, some will offer, you know, cash awards or mentorships where they will mentor your screenplay, help shape it and try and, you know, produce it in house. Uh, one of the best is probably the Disney one. Uh, which actually pays you to work as a writer in there for a year as part of a team that writes for television, a writer's group, uh, a writer's room. And many well-known uh, television writers have come from there. So uh, we get into some of that. But again, some are better than others. There are a lot of people out there saying, oh, I'm running a screenwriting contest that only costs $50 to sign up and your cash awards a thousand and you know you get 500 people submitting at 50 dollars a pop you're gonna uh do okay for yourself the thing to look for is like people with credits that are doing it people with a reputation okay so it'd be doing that okay now at the same juncture and this is hard work, but this is something that really can't be replaced, which is, you know, cold calling and trying to forge contacts yourself. OK. Uh, what I would do is this, and it's going to be kind of a two prong approach. You're going to be approaching agents and managers who represent talent, and you're going to be approaching producers that that make movies. Okay, and there's a slightly different variation on how you're going to do that. How do you find these people? The, um, one of the best places to go now is, I guess everybody's heard of the IMDB, International, uh, International Movie Database. There's also something called IMDB Pro, which, uh, you know, it's very reasonable. It's like $19 a month. I think they probably have a yearly subscription that's less. When you go to IMDb Pro, you can do a search of, okay, first of all, you go through and make a list of, you know, producers, directors, and writers whose work you admire, okay, or whose work for whatever reason you think has some, um, that, you, that your work or you will have some connection with what they do. Okay, you write comedy. You know, you're looking at comedy producers, you think this could be a good fit, you know, use your own judgment. So you go to IMDb Pro, 
there there'll be some links where you can start searching for people okay so you search for uh say one of your favorite writers okay one of my favorite writers is charlie kaufman say so check out charlie kaufman and they will give you information on who represents them okay so an agent or manager sometimes a lawyer is the person that oversees their uh their careers now what you're doing when you're going to that agent or that manager is you're really not looking to contact charlie kaufman what you're looking for is that agent who is managing someone that does that type of style and is having success with it to take you on as a client and to uh, foster your career in that same manner that they have some understanding of what you do okay so you start building a list of those people okay? who's managing who who's representing who and of people you like and then you know you start on your own the way to approach these things is okay first if you have a uh, if they have an email address first send an email okay if they don't have an email address uh you're gonna have to practice cold calling giving them a call okay like 10 years ago would be send them a letter but it's emails and phone calls now uh and you would call them and briefly introduce yourself and tell them what you're doing and that you would be curious to know if they would read your work okay i'll get into this later you're going to hear no more times than you'll hear yes but i will tell you the uh in the uh i don't know if you know the great director and writer from baltimore uh, john waters but uh it only takes one yes okay so just keep going and have a tough skin so uh so you're reaching out to the producers the directors and the writers and what you're doing with uh And with the producers, you're going to be uh, having a slightly different approach. The agents are going to be uh, more in developing your talent, okay? The producers, and you would check them under companies. They aren't under people. You would start looking for companies, okay? And you would see what types of movies they've done. And you would be approaching them more for your work, for a specific screenplay that you thought they would be interested in. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. If anybody picks up the phone and, say, and you'll be asking, I'm curious to know if anyone there would read this great screenplay I've written about uh, how great classes are at Georgetown University. Uh, if that person says, I'll read it, take it okay just because they're answering the phone don't have any second thoughts about that i know several people who've done that job and who are major producers now that's the way you rise in the business you know you find other people's work that's credible and um, you know take it to the next level and hopefully it gets made and you've got a reputation for finding talent uh, they may refer you to someone else and if they take it you know same deal uh, so let's look at the two different things here okay producers agents okay so this is really talent okay so approaching agents managers and lawyers okay so agencies are companies that take screenplays and try to sell them to their contacts okay uh, now there are two basic types of agencies okay one's called a packaging agency a type of agency is called a packaging agency 
uh, some of the well-known names in that would be Creative Artist Agency or uh, William Morris Endeavor Agency. They have a big client list. They have not only writers, they also have producers and directors and actors, and they also have what's called below the line talent, which are uh, camera operators, directors of photography, all sorts of people. They're called packaging agencies because what they do is try to take a screenplay and package it with their own group of people involved. And then they go out and try and sell that whole package. Okay. Now, this is one of those things where you may say there are exceptions to every where there are exceptions to everything. This is probably not the place for you. Okay, when you're starting out. They have uh a lot of hungry mouths to feed and to support. Uh, the choice between representing your work or representing the work of uh, Charlie Kaufman. Uh, Charlie Kaufman's already making money for them. You're not gonna make as much as he does. So he'll be the priority. Now there are also literary agencies, okay? Literary agencies are primarily just for writers. Uh, and you know, they would handle, uh, you know, novels and things of that sort as well, maybe some journalists. That's probably more where you want to be in starting your career. And most of these literary agencies have relationships with the packaging agencies. So if you find a good literary, an agent, a literary, literary agency, uh, they can do the job. It's just, you'll be more of a priority for them. Okay. There are also managers and lawyers sometimes. Okay. And agents pretty much, and look, I don't want to uh, denigrate the profession. They're great at what they do, but it's a high pressure job. And they really are out there selling. That's what they do. They sell. Uh, managers are a little bit different. Managers Many of them are former agents. Uh, some of them uh, also produce. They're also producers, but they will have fewer clients. And they tend to uh, spend more time with you shaping your work. Okay. Um, you know, agency, somebody will read the work. You may be given some quick, quick criticism about what to do with it and they'll try and sell it and hopefully it'll work. The manager may spend more and more, more time with you trying to develop it, uh, helping you not just with a half hour phone call about what, what could make it better, but you know, spending, you know, giving you revisions based on drafts that you send them and you know, reading two or three drafts and then trying to work from there. That's more one-on-one. -on -one. A lawyer certainly, can submit work for you too, but usually um, a lawyer you're not going to meet through cold calling unless you see it listed on IMDb. Uh, these pe people you would kind of meet if you were involved in some sort of negotiation or something of that sort. Uh, but there are many lawyers who do the just some lawyers have been are turned into managers too. Uh, Okay, Spike Lee through, you know, he did four films before he had a manager or an agent. He worked solely with a lawyer. Uh, now, quite often when you go to these people, especially the packaging agencies and the literary agencies, or even when you get into, uh, okay, and especially when you get into producers, which will be our next card, you're going to hear as a standard refrain about why they won't read your work. You'll probably hear, we don't take unsolicited writers, or we don't consider unsolicited writers. That means a writer that's not represented or referred to them by a known contact, by professional. Um, now, this is just something that you have to deal with, okay? There are, Plen there are plenty out there that will take you if you have a great idea. Um, but that's the standard thing you're going to hear.
you know, we don't take unsolicited writers. Uh, another thing you're going to be asked for probably by agents, by producers, not all the time, but quite frequently is you're going to be asked to submit a uh, sign off on a submission release agreement. This is an agreement that basically uh, frees them from any liability based on submitting your work to them uh, to save them from frivolous lawsuits and things of that sort. I can understand why they do it. Uh, the document itself is pretty intimidating, but it's almost a, a, a requirement of form. Some people will do it. Some people, some people will make you sign a submission release. Some people won't. Uh, so your goal in the agents and managers and lawyers, as I said, is you're looking for someone who's going to like sell your talent. It's not just the screenplay. It's, it's you. Uh, you know, your screenplay not be, might not be great for uh, something that they can't sell, but maybe they say if you're a comedy writer, maybe they can sell your sort of uh, your writing. Okay. Or your uh, thriller, suspense writer. Maybe they know someone who's got a screenplay that needs, could use your touch. Okay. Or someone has an idea that you could develop that they know of. Uh, again, it's representation, but it's also the relationships. The people who read you, you want to build this, uh, you know, hopefully like a lifelong connection with them. And as they grow, you'll grow. And again, the way to do it, emails and cold calls. And you get the information from IMDb Pro. Okay, let's look at producers. Okay, producers. Now, when you start to approach them, you aren't really going to be selling, as I said, your talent. It's going to be more of, I have a screenplay I want you to read, you know, sort of direct it to, the, to them. Okay. You're trying to sell the work itself. Uh, when you get into this and you're looking at IMDb Pro, you're going to see, and there's sort of, there's a hierarchy at a production company. Uh, the hierarchy is going to be, you know, the head producer, he may or may not be listed. Uh, there'll be development heads. You may have someone who's head of creative development. That's where you ultimately want to wind up. You won't, won't get there immediately, but that's where you would want to wind up. They may also have a development head of production. That person is handling, making, uh, the whole, uh, logistics of the budget and the movie work. They may have a separate head of development for television production and movie production. Okay. So they've got development heads, you know, and they can be called vice presidents of production or all sorts of things. And then they're going to have assistants. You know, if an assistant says, send it to me, take it. Okay. And hopefully, you know, we'll go up the food chain. Now, one thing that's going to happen when you're into this is they're going to take your uh, screenplay. The assistants may read it themselves, but the assistants are probably also being paid to do something which is called coverage. Okay. Coverage is when a screenplay comes into a studio or even to an agency, someone's going to read it. Okay, probably some unknown entity. I've done it before. Okay. Uh, and you read the screenplay and you write down a very, very brief synopsis of what it is. The goal is to, you know, take out all the good stuff you've written and condense it into a page, make it quick to read. I uh, think just gives an overview of the story. And then at the end of it, you're going to make some suggestions. Those suggestions can be, uh, consider the story and consider the writer. That means they may want, they may have an interest in producing the story and they may have an interest in using you to do it. You can also have pass on the story, but consider the writer. The story is not right for them, but it's written well. You can also have consider the story, pass on the writer. Uh, and you can have 
you know, just a straight pass. Uh, the goal here deals in relationships, emails and cold calls. You know, what could happen? Agents and managers, you would be represented. Uh, the agents would get 10%, managers 15% and up. Someone may want to represent you without signing you. you may want to shop it around. It's your decision if you want to do that. Uh, lawyers, you know, they would charge, can charge you an hourly fee or a percentage. The hourly fee is actually better. Producers, maybe you'll get a deal. Someone will option the work, you know, secure the rights to see if they could raise money, maybe get a rewrite, a development deal to develop something else, maybe a purchase agreement. They will probably first time out ask you something like this. I like the screenplay, but could you make some changes? And they're gonna ask you to write on spec. That means for free, speculation. If you get somebody that's credible, that you, and they give you some feedback that you think is credible, uh, I would take it. It's your call. But again, it's about building that relationship. You know, you aren't just going to be like giving money to someone who, you know, can't incorporate criticism or can't work with you because that's what it's all going to be about. So. Uh, there are also signatory producer, writer skilled signatory producers and non-signatory producers. Signatory producers to the Writers Guild are required to honor uh, the pay scale of the Writers Guild. And if you want to know what that is, you can go to uh, the Internet, just do a search of schedules of minimums, and you'll see what you can get. And that's the starting point. Non-signatory producers aren't aligned with uh, following those rules initially. If they get deeper into it, they would be. But there's absolutely no problems about going with a non-signatory producer. And also, one thing you can get out of this is referrals. You know, the idea that you remember there's some agencies that don't take unsolicited writers. Well, if you get one of these people to like your work and you're writing on spec, you're doing something for them for free, because they're going to try and make it, you know, they kind of owe you something. And that could be a referral to an agency that could, you know, look closer at your work. In this world, I would tell you one thing. Uh, keep your expectations modest. Someone like uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, who's, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, CSI, that's a mega producer. You know, it's very hard to get in there and be noticed. Looking at the indie world and producers that work on a smaller scale uh, would be the place to begin. Okay, Christine Vachon, who's killer films that does a lot of Todd Haynes's work. I look at. It. Okay, so you've done all that work. Prepare yourself. Look, you're going to hear no. And sometimes no response at all more than you hear yes. And you just got to keep going like the Energizer Bunny. It takes time. Here is the mantra we all have. Every studio in Hollywood passed on Star Wars. Every one of them. And who's laughing now? So you just have to have that understanding. Uh, recently, I don't know if you saw the Queen's Gambit on Netflix, great series. That was like, no, look, it can happen quickly too. Don't, this probably won't happen to you, but you gotta have that belief. That was 30 years in development of a guy just believing in the project. So it takes time. If anyone gives you a contract, get an entertainment attorney. Uh, you know, I can certainly refer you to people, or if you're in the DC area, there's a place called, uh, Washington area, uh, Washington Association of Lawyers for the Arts. You can call them up and they would help you. Okay, what should you do in the meantime? Just keep writing. Keep putting out new material. You know, never say never, but you don't get, writers don't get great until they're probably on their fourth or fifth script. 
Uh, so just keep at it. Keep learning. That's one of the exciting things about it. There's always something new to learn about screenwriting. Keep networking. Keep Go to classes. Keep meeting people. Go to pitch festivals. Get involved. Write what you love. Okay, there's a great screenwriter named William Goldman. He wrote uh, Chinatown. He uh, didn't write Chinatown. He wrote uh, Princess Bride, uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Marathon Man. You know, the list goes on. Uh, one time he was, you know, the highest paid screenwriter around. Has a great book called Adventures in the Screen Trade. And he's got a great quote, no one knows anything. Okay. Every time somebody tells you what you're writing is not what Hollywood's buying. If you love it, don't believe them. Stick to your guns. You know, the, you're, this is a very, very exciting time for you to be doing this. The fact that movies like uh, Moonlight, Nomadland, Parasite, everything, everywhere, all at once are being winning Academy Awards is jaw dropping. Okay, it was you know years past it was always like the big historical epic uh these are innovative films that are you know dealing they aren't like star-studded uh big budgeted uh projects so it's a great time to be doing so you know last thing believe in yourself uh jonathan uh that's it for me uh sorry folks i didn't mean to wrap it up i know we're cramped on time but I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, Jonathan. Great, great. Thank you very much. Uh, sure. That was that was awesome. I really appreciate that. And uh, by the amount of people staying in the room, I think everyone else appreciated it too because we had a great turnout. So I want to invite everyone if you are um, have questions um, or comments here, please put them in the chat, and we will. I will ask Kevin your questions here and, uh, you know, so please put some in there. But in the meantime, how about this? I want to uh, point to your attention and uh, Kevin, can you stop? Um, all right, here, I'll, I'll just take care of it here. Oh, stop sharing. Okay. No, yeah. yeah, but I think I can just yeah, all right, kick sure. you off. <laughs> okay. <All> so. Right. <laughs> So here, everybody, I just want to point out here, this is our online certificate in screenwriting here. Uh, this is a highly successful um, uh, workshop turned certificate with uh, Kevin Downs here. Um, so go ahead. Uh, we will be sending out information like this. And there's Kevin. But we want to, you know, draw to your attention here as well. So, OK, so now that we've got our promotion out of the way now, um, let's get into questions. Okay, so let's see here. Will we have access to this Zoom recording? Absolutely. So everyone who registered will um, receive the recording um, as well. So first question here. Well, you have a, a thank you from Victoria. And then our first question is from August Van Der Wolf. Um, how do you recommend protecting your work and knowing who to trust with ideas? Well, you know, the first thing to do to protect your work is, you know, register with the Writers Guild and copyright it. That's the very first thing. Who to trust with your work? I can tell you now, and this is again, uh, you know, one of these things you may find exceptions for. I would avoid uh, posting on websites where they ask for you to post your entire screenplay and you know, uh, you know, maybe you'll be noticed by a big name producer or anything like that. Okay, who knows who's reading it? My friend at the David Geffen Company had a great quote too about developing work, which was every submission is a chip off the rock. Okay, that means at that time there were about five studios and about you know three or four uh, television programs that could produce work much different for you now again it's a great time but every time somebody got a screenplay that was good they were all going for that same play to that same place so you want you want to avoid just like disseminating out you know uh widely those are the first things you could do 
The next thing is going to take some gut instinct. That thing about going to legitimate contests. Some of them aren't legitimate. You know, I can help you with that. Um, Then the people that you're calling, what are their credits? What's their reputation like? Um, You just have to go with your gut feeling. If you've got somebody who's nice, you know, I hate to make it simplistic, but they're nice. They're taking time for you. They're involved in the project. You're probably in good hands. Uh, Other than that, you know, I'd have no problem telling people ideas and things of that sort, but I would hold back on just like widely disseminating the script. The uh, beyond that, I again tell you most fears of plagiarism are ill-founded. People are just developing the same things all the time. It's just the way it is. Okay. Well, um, great. So, looking through here, let's see. Oh, um, let's see. We have a couple more sentiments about the very good presentation. Getting great feedback, by, by the way. Uh, one one of our people uh, on here, SDC, but I, I know his name is Steve. Um, he just wants to 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 elaborate. I guess uh, he says uh, BCC for any emails you send your work out with. Says it's rare it gets stolen anymore, but uh, you know, be able sure. to. You know, definitely keep a list of who you're giving it to. Okay, and keep a you know a trail. Hopefully, yeah. you'll never need it. Okay. Anybody that responds to you, do anything like that, you keep all those emails. Okay. So our next question here is from Pedro. It says, thank you for the presentation. When you were talking about contacting an entertainment attorney, can you please repeat the name of the place you mentioned in DC? Sure. Uh, the place in Washington is called Washington. Uh, I think it's the Washington Association of Lawyers for the Arts. It may be Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts. It's known as WALA, W-A-L-A. Just look them up on the uh, internet. Great organization. They're also going to have uh, seminars and uh, events primarily geared to lawyers in the entertainment industry uh, that you know, they can lead you to someone. And I will tell you, there are great entertainment lawyers in the D.C. area and Virginia. uh, And, you know, there there are many great ones out there. Okay, great. Uh, Let's see. We've got a few questions now, so I'm just going to keep going down the line. Is there a particular genre that is picked up more than others? Well, you know, in that realm of no one knows anything and write what you believe in. The issue really comes down to what is good for you. I mean, what do you believe in? I can tell you the majority of uh, the majority of work that's out there is, you know, when you're getting into it in feature films, you know, you're getting a lot of like action pictures and stuff like that. You know, we probably aren't going to be able to sell a script like that because they're so big budgeted, but maybe you could, you know, the majority of work that people get rewriting and things of that sort are are in that world. But again, I just cannot stress um, believing in your own work and what you're doing. Uh, Again, the, the idea that Moonlight won an Academy Award is beyond belief compared to what was happening just five or 10 years ago. Same with Nomadland, same with uh, Parasite. So, you know, it's the execution, not the idea. Yeah. Um, All right, so Jim De La Cruz says, uh, awesome presentation first, thank you. And then said, could you please talk a bit more about approaching a literary agent? Uh, Do they take specific formats? And then is it script versus novel or short story? Well, look, if you're here for, uh, there are certainly, it used to be, 
Okay, it used to be the uh, agents in New York were no took novels, and the agents in California took screenplays. Uh, it's not that way anymore. You have to call them and ask. Uh, I would think now that I, I know now that you know New York and Los Angeles are are pretty much synonymous in pursuing this. The trick to it is is when you look up the writers on IMDb Pro and see who's representing them. I mean, obviously they're representing screenwriters. Uh, so, you know, contact them with a screenplay. I'm, you know, not that involved in the uh, world of novels and prose writing, but, uh, you know, there are many literary agents that do both. And they will also do things like if you're a novel writer or have written some novels, like try and sell these uh, screenplay rights for them. You know, sell the screenplay rights to the novel. But uh, the deal is you got to call and ask. All right. So Madeline asks, uh, for, 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 uh, she says, thanks. <laughs> you, you did a great job. Um, for portfolios, do you recommend adjusting your portfolio based on who you send it to or in the same way you might adjust your resume, depending on the job you're going for? Or is it better to make the portfolio your best representation of yourself? Best reputation or representation of yourself. I will tell you this. I mentioned it earlier. If you can. Uh, if you are strong in a particular style okay you can write great thrillers or that's what you want to do uh, you know you have a gift for science fiction stress your strengths to all of them and the more div uh, the more diversified if someone's giving a uh in you know exceptions for everything someone gives a uh great comedy screenplay and then a great uh, melodrama, you know, it's hard to, you know, target the audience for that writer. Okay. Uh, so I would just like, you know, again, write what you love and write, write your strength. You would be lucky to have enough good scripts to be able to pick and choose what your portfolio is to say, I'm going to just include my, thrillers here and then I'm just include my comedies for this person. It, it's hard to write a good one. And that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if only we could have a full portfolio of every genre, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> one, All right. One, so uh, Ver, Ver, Bernadine asks, uh, how important is having a pitch deck? Well, pitch decks are really getting more into the realm of a producer. Okay. Um, and this is writing uh, pitch deck. It's good for your own creativity. I will tell you, you're in a position and I'm assuming many of you are first time writers uh, are just drafting your first screenplays and you don't have any uh, momentum at this point. If that's the case, then you have to have the screenplay. So you already have to get noticed before you're getting into like pitching the ideas and pitching what you can do. So the pitch deck, which is basically a PowerPoint demonstration of, you know, an idea. It's somewhat putting the cart ahead of the horse, as they say, unless you have sold something and you have people looking to hire you. So I would say, uh, you know, for now, I would hold off on it until you have that work to match it. If you've got the work to match it, and then somebody wants to get deeper into it, I would do it. Uh, so here's one from Renita. Thank you for this great presentation. Is the intro to screenwriting class useful for someone transitioning from playwriting to screenwriting with an interest in adaption? Sure. Yeah. Um, Without question, you know, one of the great things about teaching at Georgetown, I've taught it numerous places too. Uh, and this is by far my favorite. One of the great things with teaching at Georgetown is just the diversity of the student population. 
uh, we have journalists. We certainly have had playwrights. We've had uh, actors in the class. And we've had just people with just a passing interest in it, too. Uh, just movie nuts, which is enough on your resume if, if in many ways. Uh, so, yeah, you know, there. I think what you're going to find out is that uh, there are different approaches to uh, how a play would be adapted for the screen or a novel would be adapted for the screen than just presenting it as is. I'll touch on it briefly in the intro class. You aren't going to get into it that deeply until you get would get into advanced class. The big thing in the inter, intro class is this, is learning how to show a story and not tell it. You know, show it visually through action and what people do. And as opposed to play, it's not what they say. So that's what you've got to grapple with. And then with novels, you know, they're very thematically based and thematics and theme is important in film, but it's, they're more plot driven. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll just do one or two more here as, mm -hmm. as we're approaching our time limit. Um, Sam asks, are there any data banks or agencies that you recommend? I know WGA East and West both have Okay, my screen just jumped. Both have signatory agency lists. Are these acceptable resources to be contacting? Yeah, sure. Uh, and thanks for recognizing that the WGA and West are like very, very uh, you know valid organizations to reach out to. They have a list of signatory agents that have agreed to work within the confines of within the guidelines of the Writers Guild, which means they're going to be legitimate. Now, that list is going to be overwhelming when you see it. And it's like, where do I start here? Uh, you, you know, you have to cold call, things like that. It's not impossible. Uh, the, again, checking the IMDB database so you can see what agents are handling, what kind of properties is going to be more directed to than uh, just using the signatory list. But yeah, the signatory list is fine. Yeah, great. Well, uh, I think I think we'll wrap it up here okay. as we're approaching our time limits and uh, people probably want to get back to maybe they don't want to get back to work, but <laughs> they might. Have okay. to. Yeah. Um, so thank you again, Kevin Downs for joining yep. us for knowledge at noon today. Uh, Kevin, again, is a, one of our faculty members and in and, and the screenwriting uh, certificate, along with his uh, great career and awards and recognition. So, uh, Kevin, thank you again for joining us and thank you, everybody, for attending today's knowledge at noon. It's my pleasure. I wish you guys the best. OK, and good luck to you. OK.